Hi everybody, thank you very much for joining me. I've got a load of things to show you today. I've just got back from Liverpool. I, I've been at the International Beetle Week. This is my wristband from the Adelphi Hotel. I'm going to tell you all about that. I've got some things to show you that have arrived in the post uh, of interest. Some things which you won't have seen before um, and probably not heard of before. Uh, and some things that some of you might have seen. So, yeah, just got back from Liverpool. Really great day. Uh, it was a fairly last-minute decision to go. Um, I, made, I made some notes on the train back so I wouldn't forget uh, what I was doing while I was there. But I, it's been quite a few years since I've been to Liverpool for the Beatles week that they have at the end of August on the bank holiday weekend each year. Uh, used to be a massive thing. Uh, my understanding from not having been for a lot of years is that it had sort of tailed off a little bit, but they're really trying to relaunch it at the moment. And uh, went to the cavern first of all. You've got to do it, haven't you? Um, I met up with my auntie and uncle. I had a great couple of hours in the cavern club and pub. Saw an Indonesian Beatles tribute band in the cavern that were really good, surprisingly good. Um, and I headed off eventually down to the Adelphi Hotel, which is near Lime Street Station. And this was the, the Beatles convention that's been going on all weekend. And they've got various guest speakers, they've got record fairs, they've got all, and they've got live bands, all sorts of things going on. As I got there, uh, Chris O'Dell, uh, who was, you know, some of you will know, she was a tour manager and she sort of dealt with it. She worked with a lot of bands in the 70s. See, she was the subject of George's song, Miss O'Dell. She'd been giving a talk. I just caught the back few minutes of that. Uh, one um, one bit that I did enjoy was the, the person interviewing her said uh, towards the end, you did also work with the Stones, didn't you? And she said, well, yeah, but, you know, when you've worked with the Beatles, the only way you can go is down. I thought that was quite funny. Uh, so, saw her, then... Uh, bumped into Mark Lewison, completely surprisingly, because he wasn't advertised as being there. He wasn't there in any sort of official capacity. He he said he was just there as a fan. I had a bit of a chat with him. I'm sure, though, there were certain people in the building who he must have been wanting to have a chat with, maybe interview. Frida Kelly was around the, the former secretary of the Beatles fan club, so maybe he was wanting to speak to her. I don't know. This is me guessing. May Pang was in the building and I've been learning a lot more about May Pang lately and as I'm going to come on to in a moment, um, I didn't even realise that she was working for the Beatles before the Beatles even split up. So she would be a good person for Mark to speak to as well, whether he did or not, I don't know. But uh, yeah, the next guest speaker was May Pang. Uh, she gave a great talk for about 50 minutes roughly, uh, absolutely packed room for May. Uh, she really packed the place out. So yeah, she was telling us about how she got to work for Apple in 1969, how she basically just blagged away into the building and said, have you got any jobs going? And she managed to get a job there. And she revealed that when the uh, the, the Paul is dead rumours started happening around sort of September, was it September, October 1969, and the press were descending on the Beatles Apple building uh, in, I think it must have presumed it was in New York, could have been in LA, not sure. She was the one who was handling the inquiries, saying, um, no, we, we don't know anything about this. Uh, so all those quotes that were attributed to, to Apple from 1969 uh, in America of denying all knowledge of this, it was actually May Pang who dealt with that. I didn't realise that she'd been involved in the story that early. Uh, and she was given a Hall of Fame, uh, an International Beatles Week Hall of Fame trophy at the end. She was quite emotional about that. It, that was good to see. We then had Jeff Baker as a speaker. Now, he was brilliant. Uh, so a lot of you will know that Jeff was uh, Paul McCartney's former publicist from, I guess, probably sometime in the 1980s through to the early 2000s. Jeff wasn't there plugging anything. He didn't have a book to sell. He was just literally there to answer any questions that were put to him by the audience and nothing seemed off limits. Uh, you could tell that even though it ended a bit acrimoniously, we, we think... Uh, he, he did talk about the, the time when he was sacked as a result of the David Blaine incident in London. Uh, but he did say then that he was re reinstated the next day. If, if I'd have had a chance to have asked him a question, I'd have asked him how much longer he worked for Paul after that. I didn't get a chance to, unfortunately. But he was telling great stories about Paul uh, doing his concert at Red Square in the early 2000s in Moscow. Stories about Putin. Paul apparently stitched Putin up. Putin didn't want to be seen dancing to back in the USSR. Uh, Putin knew exactly what the set list was. Paul caught him out by doing back in the USSR. Again, 
as, as the encore because he wanted Putin to be not have slipped out uh, to be to be away from when that song was sung. Uh, he, he was telling some great stories about the Liverpool Albert Dock concert in 1990. And he was saying that that was his favourite Paul event that he's ever been involved with. He said just the, um, for example, the whole uh, John medley that he did of Strawberry Fields help give peace a chance. Just saying what an incredible moment that was. And he was actually talking as well about how difficult it was to put that concert on because at first they couldn't shift tickets for it. Uh, it was really they were really struggling. He said they, they were going around uh, Liverpool schools and all sorts of offices and such like just literally handing out free tickets to get people to go to that gig. So that was a bit of a surprise. But he really, in his mind, credits that as been the relaunch of Paul McCartney uh, and his love for Liverpool and Liverpool's love for him. And then after that, the Quarrymen did a gig. So I've never seen the Quarrymen live, so I was really keen to see that. There was two original Quarrymen in the band. So there was uh, there was Rod Davis, who was very much sort of up front as the front man, although everybody really had a turn at singing. And Colin Hanton on the drums. And it's worth remembering, uh, historically, there was a period of time when the band that would become the Beatles was a four-piece of John, Paul, George and Colin. Colin Hanton. He was one of the, the Fab Four before they became the Fab Four. So it was great historically to see them playing. And on keyboards was the son of John Duff Lowe. Now, a lot of you will know... That John Duflo was uh, um, sort of a piano player who played with the Quarrymen. He played on the session that the uh, the Quarrymen did at Percy Phillips Studio in Liverpool in 1958, where they recorded "That'll Be the Day" and "In Spite of All the Danger." So to have his son there and his son sang "In Spite of All the Danger" at the concert, so that was great to see as well. Uh, so I'm really glad I've ticked the Quarrymen off my list. Uh, so a, a great day at the Liverpool Beatles convention. I hope that that continues to go from strength to strength. I will certainly look at who's going to be on next year and uh, hopefully, hopefully stay longer than I did uh, than I managed to do this year. So that's the convention. Just wanted to show you some other things that have um, uh, th that I've acquired just lately. Um, some of them completely unknown to me that they were happening. First of all, there's a new book coming out. 1973, the last year the Beatles were fab by John Blaney. This arrived completely unexpectedly through the post a couple of days ago. Uh, this, um, I have got another book by John Blaney that came out last year. This was his, the songs he was singing. He's doing a series of Paul McCartney through the decades. So it's the same author as this book, which I did cover um, in a couple of videos last year. This book's out on the 1st of November. Uh, I will put links to it down below if you're interested in having a look at this. Um, I will show you the blurb that's on the back of the book that describes, but it's basically this This book is, you know, the last year before the, before the disillusionment, disillusionment, I think that's the word, of the Beatles. This was the last full year that they had together. They were competing against each other and they were competing against themselves, as it says in here. Uh, so this is uh, this looks like it could be an interesting book and I will be back at some point in the future when I've read this to tell you what I think of it. Uh, I'll show you the chapters there. So it's it's split as a month by month book. And I know a lot of you are around. Um, this is important to a lot of you. The text, for example, it's quite a good sized text. It's not really small. It's not going to be um, a challenge. You're not going to need to have supervision to be able to read this book. So that's a good thing. Uh, it is. How many pages is it? It's just over 300 pages long. Uh, so it's, uh, there's, there's plenty of good stuff in there, including photos as well as the text. So, yeah, I'm going to have a read of that and I'll let you know how that uh, how I found that but like I say there's links if you want to go and check it out yourself down below now also um I got I want to say a big thank you because I've not been able to contact him directly uh, to a chap named a uh, chap called Frank who what used to be in a band called Johnny B and the Shakers and I got a message completely out of the blue um I don't know just over a week ago maybe from um my local record shop, Revolution Records in Selby. They, um, they sent me a message saying, Andrew, somebody's dropped off a, a gift for you. Do you want to come in and collect it? Okay. And it was Frank from Johnny B and the Shakers. And he'd left this, uh, this poster. So, uh, Frank, if you're out there, if you're watching, I want to say a huge thank you for this. Uh, this is a 
this is well. I assume this has got this has got to be a reproduction. It's obvious. So well, it's obviously not an original. The original will be worth tens of thousands of pounds. This is a reproduction of a poster for the Beatles at La Scala Ballroom in Runcorn. For those of you that don't know, Runcorn is a town probably maybe about ten miles southeast of Liverpool. Eleventh of December, nineteen sixty-two. The Beatles headlining the North's number one rock combo. Uh, also featuring the Mersey Beats, Johnny Sandon and the Remo Four. Uh, now, there's some signatures on here. and These are genuine signatures from what I can... They are genuine. They, these aren't prints. So, I've been trying to figure out what they are. So, first of all, down in the bottom corner, <clears throat> Tony Booth. Not Tony Booth, father-in-law of Tony Blair and father of Cherie Blair. Different Tony Booth. Tony Booth was um, the person who designed this poster. He was the poster artist for the Beatles. He worked directly with Brian Epstein and, and even Alan Williams as well uh, back in the early 60s. And he designed the Beatles posters, including this one. Um, so this is signed by Tony. Now, Tony passed away in 2017. So it's obviously several years old at least is this. Also up here, we've got, the we've got the signature in the top corner of Billy Hatton, who was the bass player in uh, The Foremost. Now, he also died in 2017. So this dates this at probably at, at least from 2016, uh, this poster. There's one more signature and I haven't quite sussed out. Now, my initial reaction to that uh, autograph there is it's Billy J. Kramer. But I don't know for sure that it is. Uh, I googled Billy J. Kramer autograph and I found something. It looked similar, but not exact. I did wonder as well, could it be uh, Billy Kinsley from the Mersey Beats? That They're on here. Could that be Billy Kinsley? Again, I found Billy Kinsley's autograph on Google. It doesn't actually look anything like. So I think it might be Billy J. Kramer's autograph, but I'm not 100% certain. Uh, but yeah, Frank, thank you very much. This is going to go up on my wall. I really, really appreciate that. And thank you. <clears throat> uh, the other thing to show you, to cut an extremely long story short, um, in my John Lennon Mind Games cube, uh, there was an item that was damaged um, at the point when I received it. I managed to I managed to not show it on my video, but they very kindly said, <clears throat> "Send it back. Uh, we'll we'll replace the damaged part for you." So they did. My Newtopia card from my Mind Games Deluxe box accidentally ended up in the package that I sent back. So they posted it back to me, but there was also a couple of other bits in the uh, in the envelope when I got it back. So I want to thank the team uh, the team at the John Lennon Estate who sent me. First of all, this was in the envelope, so um, a Mind Games uh, square piece of card that's got some some badges on it, three badges, pins as I believe they call them in the U in the US. Uh, so three Mind Games related uh, badges. I did ask whether. Um, were these commercially available or not? Uh, the reply I got suggested that these were handed out at the John Lennon treasure hunt that took place in Liverpool back on, I think it was 6th of July. So there might be some people potentially watching who did that treasure hunt who might have these, but uh, that's nice. I don't think they're available to buy. So I was really happy with that. And also in there was this postcard, uh, Mind Games postcard based on the, the new release and really happy to see on the back it's been signed all the best, Sean Ono Lennon. So fantastic, thank you very much for that. Uh, that will go on. I've got, a, I've got a little shelf up there that's got little knickknacks and things that I've been sent and things that are of particular um, sentimental value to me. It'll go up on that, uh, on that shelf with those things. So yeah, uh, so that was my day at Beatles week. I wanna thank everybody who came up and said hello. I did say on the live stream the other night, if you see me, come and say hello. And loads of you did, probably, I think maybe about 10 or a dozen or so people came up and said hello. I had to do selfies. I even signed an autograph for uh, Gordon, if you're out there, hello Gordon. Uh, but it was great to see uh, see all of you there. Um, and yeah, just a few things that I've uh, picked up over the last couple of weeks. Let me know if you were at Beatles Week, what did you enjoy seeing there um, in Liverpool over the last few days? I would love to know, and uh, I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.